Hey gamers, welcome back to Fits the Game. Today we're going to take this dollar store box and turn it into a dice box similar to this one I made for my wife about a year ago. Logo. So it's become a bit of a tradition of mine to make dice boxes, different styles for new players whenever I introduce them. So today I wanted to take one just basic dollar store, dollar twenty-five box, take a bit of paint, um, a bit of something to line the inside with and make it into a kind of nice functional dice box for an, any new players or just for yourself if you want to have a nicer place to store your dice than a, a bag or an old box. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and paint the box black. Just got some basic acrylic paint from the dollar store. So I'm just going to go crazy. Okay, there we go. We have our box. It's now painted black. I uh, did about two coats on it. And it seems to be really well, really basically to my liking. Um, you'll notice inside I did the walls inside black but I didn't do the full base because what I plan on doing is taking this foam sheet and cutting it out and making the base layer and the walls coated in this foam so when the dice are in the box and they're banging around they're not making too much noise during travel. Okay so the thing I like about this foam is it has these colored lines through it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I like this nice white strip um, seems nice and bright um, so I want that to run down the center of both the bottom here and the top when you look at it so what I'm going to do just for a shortcut here Instead of having to measure things out, I'm just going to take this white line right here that runs up. That's a straight line that runs the entire length of the sheet. I'm just going to cut a straight line there. And on this side, I'm going to look at this red line right here. And I'm going to cut straight up there, and that'll be um, a good width to fit this inside the box. Um, it doesn't need to be 100% perfect to the edge. If there's a little bit of a gap, it's okay, because I'm going to line the walls as well. And when the walls get lined, this has a fair, fair thickness to it, so it'll cover over those little gaps if there happen to be any. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to make a few marks here so I know and I remember which lines I'm judging by. Okay, so we're just left with this strip. I'm just going to size it up here. Actually, it looks pretty spot on to exactly where I want it to be width-wise. So I'm going to have one strip down here, and I'm going to do another strip in the lid right here. Okay, now we're going to get our hot glue gun out, and I'm just going to cover the inside of here with hot glue. Okay, now I'm going to try and continue the pattern up the side of the walls here. So I want to continue this to here, so I'm just going to place this in exactly where I want it.
Okay, now I'm just gonna continue along with this. I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom with this pattern and the same thing on the cover. And then I'm just gonna get some strips with lines and put them on the side. There we go, now we have a lined box. Nice soft foam so the dice won't make too much noise inside. Um, kind of frilled here on me a bit. I'm not super happy about that, but that's okay. Uh, it's not the end of the world. So the only other thing that of note here is this white uh, foam backer on this liner. Um, what I would do to get rid of that, I'm just going to take a sharpie and just kind of color it in as I did over here, just to kind of make that seam disappear so you don't notice the foam so much. There we go. Okay, so the box is coming along nice, but it looks a little dull on the outside. I'm not a big fan of these ugly hinges on the side either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this fake leather, I guess it would be. And I'm just going to kind of bind this similar to how my wife's dice box is bound. I'm just going to kind of wrap this around the book to make it look like the binding along the side. Okay, to do that, I'm just going to take this, lay it out. I've already kind of made a bit of an eyeball measurement here. So I want this to come up the edge like this. And just be a little bit of overlap on the side. So what I'm going to do is, I know that this is enough to get over the top and then over a bit. So I'm just going to come back a bit more and I just made a mark with a sharpie here so that'll be enough to have a bit of a lip on either side plus cover the back of the box so the only other thing I need to do here is get the height measurement for the box so I'm just gonna lay it inside of here and I use the box itself to figure out that length and then I'm just going to cut out this piece and then glue it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue along here and along here. I'm not going to put any actual glue on the back of here because I want this to be flexible when I open it. I don't want it to be pulling off of here. I just want it to, to bend with the box as it opens. So I'll go ahead and do that. There we go, we have a binding on our book now. Um, so the front of the box is looking just a little bit bland, with just all the flat black and then the black seam, or the black binding. Um, so I just happened to have a bunch of old jewelry laying around um, that was gifted to my wife. Uh, she got it all for free, and among it I found this little gem. It was originally a necklace. Let's see if I can get a better focus on that. It was originally a necklace. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this to the front of the box here. I'll glue it on there and it'll kind of be the cover piece for our book. Okay, so we have the front piece for our box. Um, I'm going to try and do something with these eyes to make them stand out a little more. I'm going to try and take some of these red sparkly gems, I guess you could call them. And I'm going to try and glue them in behind the eyes. So they'll come out looking like he's got crimson eyes. There we go, some crimson eyes for our face for the front of our box. What I might do, I'm not sure how good of an idea this is, but I might just go ahead and fill this entire back area in with hot glue and try and level this off a bit so I can get as much coverage, um, surface contact with the box as I can on the back of this thing. Okay, so the decorative piece for the front of our box is ready to go. I kind of flatten up the back with some hot glue. So that'll be nice and ready to lay flat. 
on the front of her box. Okay, I found everything was just looking a little bit too dark, so I found these gold-colored stickers I had laying around from another project I had done. So I'm just going to make a little pattern here with them. I'm going to glue them all on one by one, and then we'll have a bit of color to it. So there we go, uh, finished dice box. Okay, there we go. We have ourselves a finished dice box. I forgot to mention before, but pretty much everything for this build came from the dollar store. The lining inside of the box the box itself, the gold pieces on the front, the paint for the box, and this brooch on top, the face, was actually salvaged um, from just a pile of old jewelry that was laying around. And the binding on the side was actually purchased from a fabric store quite a while ago. I bought about a yard of this stuff and it's blasting me forever. Um, so there we go, we have our dice box. If you like what you saw here today, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. If you like the kind of content we've been putting out so far, please feel free to subscribe. And if you want to be notified as soon as our videos go live, please hit the bell notification beside the subscription button. So if you have any other crafts you'd like to see me make, game related, D&D related, or just anything at all, please feel free to leave it in the comments below and We'll see you in the next one.